Hi, this is your Sapnil Bharti and we are here at QCon and Cloud Edicon. And today we have with us once again Ram Iyengar, Chief Evangelist at the Cloud Foundry Foundation. Ram, it's great to have you on the show. Hi, Swapnil. Always a pleasure to be here. It is always a pleasure. Give us an update on Cloud Foundry Foundation. How are things? How is the adoption? What are the projects? So the Cloud Foundry Foundation enjoys rock solid stability, uh, like 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 always. There's been very good you know progress in terms of uh, keeping the cloud foundry projects alive keeping them going keeping the governance going keeping the open source contributions coming there's uh, some renewed interest in some of our projects like build packs and the stratos which was like the ui for cloud foundry which could soon become like a ui for kubernetes as well and there's renewed interest in stratos and then there's also a new donation to the Cloud Foundry Foundation, which is uh, Concourse, a CD tool. Uh, it's sort of like, I wouldn't say rising from the ashes because uh, uh, the, the thing I like about Concourse is it's a very sticky tool. Like the teams that try Concourse just love it and don't move to any other CD tool. And it's, it's serving very niche and important use cases that a lot of developers have for their CD tool. So uh, it lets you visualize pipelines and build them and it's got all of these nifty features. Obviously it has a lot of pivotal pedigree but right now it's an open source project within the foundation. Can you also give us an update on Kurifi? What's really going on there? So the last we spoke was about Kurifi getting support for managed services and things like that. We've refined support for services. We've done more with the services lifecycle. So previously, while we were able to create and manage some of them, we now have the ability to do more with it. Um, there's some stuff that we've done that's obviously boring to talk about, but important for developers like log cache and so many different things around that. So Kurifi is starting to get more parity with Cloud Foundry, so which is becoming more appealing to you know the enterprise use cases and a lot of general purpose use cases within the Kubernetes ecosystem. Can you also give us some brain on build packs? Build packs is probably the biggest draw to our booth here at KubeCon. Tons and tons of people just seem to recognize the project. They like what they see. They come up to us and say they're using build packs in particular ways. So the grassroots adoption and the traction among the developer community has been fantastic. Now, obviously, it's an open ecosystem. There's a lot of help from the Heroku folks, for example, and the uh, people at Google are evangelizing build packs. And there's, you know, end user companies like Bloomberg and ING, who are all talking about build packs a lot. And whether it's, you know, this side of the pond or in the US, there's a lot of interest in the project in general, not just from consuming build packs that are there, but customizing build packs for very specific developer experiences and using them. The interesting use cases that we keep hearing about are build packs for ML ops and build packs for a lot of the AI related stuff. And it's it's great that build packs can tackle such a wide variety of use cases. And it's nice to see people contributing some of these back to the open ecosystem but obviously in some cases they don't but you know just just the uh, consumption in all of these different places is something that we never imagined was possible and it's a nice testament to the open ecosystem that exists around it talk about what kind of use cases are still there off platform where folks are still using it as the foundation yeah so a lot of people who come to our booth are happy cloud foundry users but somewhat unhappy Kubernetes users. Now, I shouldn't be saying this at a KubeCon, but uh, it, it, it is a little bit of truth, which is that they all want a sophisticated experience over Kubernetes. They're, they're tired of wrangling with the spanner and making things work. And it, it, it's the, the overall developer experience around Kubernetes offers so much promise and so much choice it's kind of like the Wild West at the moment. And so what a lot of people are sort of converging towards is maybe the paved path experience is somewhat of a better choice as opposed to, you know, let's keep everything open. And 
what I also like about the current state of Cloud Foundry, the CNCF ecosystem and Kubernetes and all of this is you can start with a paved path and sort of, you know, build your own as you go along and customize something that's bespoke for your team and for your workflows because there's so many options available. So that's how I'd like to see this community mature and things like that. So Cloud Foundry, I think, with their Corifi project at least, offers a path for the cloud native community. And then, you know, if things can have to take a different direction from there, sure. But, you know, it's a, it's a good starting point for a lot of these teams. And that's what we're seeing more and more of at the booth. Do you also, I mean, we talked about Corifi and the name change, you know, I remember the early days, you know, there were a lot of name change happened, the provider, you know, Kubernetes uh, and Cloud Foundry. How are you also getting queries where folks are looking at, you know, moving to Kubernetes or also, I mean, we have talked a lot about that. You folks talked about the developer, you know, experience, you know, the CF push, the ma magic there. Kubernetes was not known for those things. It was totally opposite. So talk about how it is benefiting the larger Kubernetes ecosystem. Yeah, so like I said, while Kubernetes is amazing as a tool and the CNCF ecosystem around it is just fantastic and pushing the boundaries around what can and cannot be done and trying to make Kubernetes one of the most complete and comprehensive platforms, it's hard to pick out one path for your developers. You want them to use Kubernetes and consume cloud native projects, but you also want them to do it in three weeks and not in three years. So uh, a lot of teams that are working with the cloud native ecosystem would, could, should benefit from something like Cloud Foundry, which is that here's a good way to start consuming these 10 CNCF projects and not worry about cobbling them together and making sure they work together and shaving the proverbial yeah. Ram, once again, thank you so much for joining me today and give us another date on the Cloud Foundry. And as usual, I look forward to chatting with you again. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Swapnil. This is a special one because on the first day of the keynote, Chris Anichik mentioned that Cloud Foundry was one of the original contributors in the room when Kubernetes started. And so, you know, we've all come 10 years and it's, it's so nice for both of the communities to sort of cross-pollinate and work well together. And we're really looking forward to keeping the momentum going. So nice to, you know, be here. Uh, nice to be talking about it. And thanks so much for having me.